these four images have in common? Stay tuned and Ms. Usher and I will tell you. Good morning Sunday School and a special good morning to our young people. This is our youth overview of the Sunday School lesson. Our lesson this week wraps up the quarter talking about wisdom. The youth theme is watch what you say and the general lesson theme is taming the tongue. Our scripture reading is coming from James, the third chapter, the first through the 12 verses. And young people, I hope you're reading the word. Before we go further, let's hear our lesson introduction and words of wisdom from Miss Usher. Good morning, everyone. We have another opportunity to speak to you, and I'm so grateful. This lesson is Watch What You Say, and it's James once again demonstrating wisdom and true faith. Words can serve as either a helpful or a harmful force in our lives. Christians should carefully guard their words, demonstrating the truth of godly wisdom. Not many of us should become teachers because they will be judged at a higher standard. We all stumble to be perfect, to keep the whole body in shape. Our time keeps the whole body in shape. We should live by what we say. We put bits into the mouths of horses for them to obey us, and we use rudders to control ships. Consider great forest fire it started with a small spark. Like the tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body. It sets the whole course of one's life on fire. All kinds of animals and reptiles have been tamed by mankind, but no human can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil and full of deadly poison. Out of the mouth comes praise and cursing. We praise God with it. We curse humans with it. This should not be. We need to think before we speak and watch what we say. Before we say it because we cannot take it back once it leaves our tongue. So young people and all people, be aware of the tongue. It can destroy someone's life. So don't forget to obey your parents and the commandments the Lord has given us. Because when you are obedient, your days will be long and full of goodness. If not, they will be short and full of trouble. Remember the Lord knows your heart. Don't be talking about she made me sick. He made me sick. The Lord knows your heart. And when you think about things that come to your tongue, so watch what you say. Love you. Miss you. Be glad to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Usher. At the opening of the lesson, four images were displayed on the screen and you were asked, what do they have in common? Well, the first thing they have in common is that they are each referenced in our scripture reading today. The second thing they have in common is that they each can impact something much larger than themselves. Hmm, let's take a closer look. The third verse in our lesson talks about how the horse's bit can control the horse's whole body. There's an arrow pointing to the bit in the horse's mouth on our image. Simply speaking, the bit is attached to the bridle and the reins. The reins are used to steer but the bit is what makes the horse do what we want it to do. The fourth verse in our lesson talks about how a small helm can control an entire ship. This is an image of the helm of a ship. As you can see, it's a steering wheel for a ship. Just like the steering wheel of a car is much smaller than the car itself, the helm is much smaller than the ship, but can still control the ship's direction. The fourth verse in our lesson also talks about how a little fire can kindle it or cause a great matter. Ms. Usher mentioned that a small flame 
can cause a huge forest fire. James used these analogies to make a comparison about the power of the tongue. He tells us in our scripture reading that the tongue can be evil and deadly and that we just can't control it. And I'm sure we can agree with James. Have you ever found yourself saying something that you later regretted or wish you had not said? I know I have. Well, guess what? If we can't control our tongue, then our tongue is controlling us. We need God to help us with our tongue because we alone can't control it. Young people, this is so important because we must be careful about the words that come out of our mouths. James tells us that our small tongue can control our entire body and can have a huge impact on our lives. Choosing our words carefully and exercising self-control when we speak is showing wisdom. And we've already discussed in prior lessons this quarter that wisdom comes from God. If you find that you sometimes speak negatively about others or even yourself, ask God to help you. Our words can destroy, but our words can also uplift. Our words have power. Thanks for joining Ms. Usher and I for the Youth Overview. Let's now transition to the adult lesson. teacher uh, this morning Reverend Johnny William is going to come and give us the lesson Amen. Come on, preacher. thank you um, Reverend Donaldson yes sir God bless you Reverend and um, to all of you it's just good seeing you yeah. uh, Bishop um, Millicent and it's just good being back in the house of the Lord. So right. much have happened. Yeah, yeah. Since we lay eyes on each other. But the Lord is good. Yeah. I want to thank uh, our superintendent, uh, Shel Bellamy, mm -hmm. for the great work that she's doing mm -hmm. and keeping the Mount Zion Sunday School alive yeah. and, and I hope that um, uh, our Sunday school will continually be of use to the church and to the ones that need to know more about God's word yeah now I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, read um, the third chapter of the book of James. Yeah. And I'm going to do the entirety. Yes, sir. Um, from 1 through 12. And I'm going to ask that if you guys would just keep me in prayer. I'm a little, uh, I don't know, it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see. You know, <laughs> when you uh, when you uh, when you're doing this on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. it'd be some folk people folk in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it, it is a different feeling. Mm -hmm. And so I prayerfully ask for your prayer from the Book of James, um, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. And we're going to read down to the 12th verse. Yes, sir. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers mm -hmm. in the church. But we who teach will be judged more strictly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. Oh, but if we could control our tongue, mm -hmm. we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. Mm -hmm. We can make a large horse go whether we want by means of a small bit in his mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn whatever 
the pilot chooses to go. Yes. Even though the wind are strong, in the same way the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. Mm -hmm. But a tiny spark can set a great force on fire. Mm -hmm. And the tongue is a flame of fire. Yes. It, is a, it is a whole world of wickedness mm -hmm. corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire. Mm -hmm. For it is set on fire by hell itself. Mm -hmm. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish. But no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, mm -hmm. and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. And so blessings and cursings come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubbles out with both fresh water and bitter waters? Does a fig tree produce olives and a grapevine produce figs? No. And you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. Amen. It's just good. to be back and doing some of this stuff I normally do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I won't confine you with a subject today, but I want you to come and go with me. And let's walk down into the text. And let's just see for a few moments. Not long. Not long. In this particular letter that James He's writing to the church in a practical, mm -hmm. common point of view. Now, there's a big difference between practical and professional. Mm -hmm. A professional point of view can only speak to its kind the learned and the educated. Mm -hmm. But a practical point of view speaks to everybody, mm -hmm. to the learned and to the unlearned mm -hmm. in a common way. Oh, I guess this is why the people the common people always receive Jesus gladly because Jesus spoke in a practical way. Mm -hmm. Common point of view. He said, love ye one and another as I have loved you. Practical, but yet common point of view. And so here in the text here, the church had expanded. Mm -hmm. The church had grown. And the church needed more teachers. Mm -hmm. They needed more leaders. Uh, the church needed more teachers to help teach in the Sunday school program. The church needed more teachers to teach the young children vacation in Bible school institute. Mm -hmm. And the church needed more leaders 
to teach the many auxiliaries that are so needful and helpful to the church and the community too. Mm -hmm. you know? The church needed teachers and leaders. I like to believe that no doubt they had poster signs out on every other corner and said the church needs teachers and leaders. And so here James, he comes on the scene and he said, hold up. Wait a minute. Now, in order to be a teacher yeah, 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 and right. a leader in the church, that calls for a great uh, or tremendous responsibility yeah. because you got to watch yeah. what you say because the tongue, the tongue, the tongue carries the power of life and death. You got to watch being a leader and a teacher. You got to watch what you say. Oh, I guess this is why the Bible says that a lying tongue is an abomination before the law. You got to watch what you say. Could it be the possibility that the reason our great nation has uh, has divided uh, because of Donald Trump's lying tongue. Oh boy. Watch it now. He's lying all the time. <laughs> he lies all the time. So many families, American families, are hurting and are suffering because of his lying tongue. Our American government has been stagnated like a frozen pond because of his lying tongue. He lies all the time. You know what I think? I think that he could use his tongue to give life. All he got to do is mandate America to wear face shield or, 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 or mask. The scientific community said it'll save at least 35 to 40,000 lives. He could use his tongue to give life and said and tell the American people we're going to pray for all of the 175,000 uh, bereaved families to give it life. Prayer changes things. Oh, yeah. He can give it life. But he said, he give death. He said, it's all right for y'all to go to the bars. It's all right to go to the beaches. It's all right uh, to have block uh, uh, parties. Because that's your own constitutional right. right. He speaks death. The wages of sin is death. Glory. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And then so many of us, we walk around one and another every day and talk to each other with a split tongue. The power of the tongue. Life. It gives life and death. A split tongue, they say, uh, it, 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 it's a forky tongue, like they say a snake got. A split tongue. It's a lying tongue, it says, Something right here on this side, or over here it says all right, and over here it says no. Uh -huh. Split tongue. Wow. Lying tongue. And the power of the tongue carries 
life. And they can tear it down. We have to watch how we be careful in how we talk to our children. That's right. That's right. Because our lives are built upon what's put into us as a child. Mm -hmm. So many children that ran away from home because of some family member split tongue, lying tongue. Children going away from home because of some family member's tongue. We got to be careful. Mm -hmm. We got to be careful. You know, I remember telling my Sunday school class, Sister Bellamy, you may have heard me say this. Um, I remember when I had a faulty. I had a bad tongue. I think I told you this in the school. And you know, if I never, if I never receive another blessing anymore, I'm so thankful that the Lord came and removed my stuttering tongue. I want the world to know that. Lord move my stuttering tongue. I remember when I was teaching school, when the children would be exchanging classes, coming down the hall, and you would hear all kinds of profanity, cursing, and they would use the MF word like the common denominator. And when they would try to come in my class, I said, you can't come in here with that. And one day, I shall never forget, I went down to this teacher's lounge to take my break. And when I went in there, me and everybody else in there was cussing up a stone. Oh, how well I remember. When I came back to my room, something come all over. I am going to forget it. <laughs> and he said, Johnny, how can you tell the children to not curse when you are cursing just oh, as yeah, bad yeah. or maybe more? And then Jesus came into my heart. Let me tell you, let me tell you, children. Man cannot control the tongue. Come on, come on. A ship is controlled by its rudder. An airplane is controlled by its throttle. But no man can control the tongue. Yes, since Jesus came into my heart, not only did he give me a brand new tongue, but he gave me a brand new vocabulary to go in my head. I thank him for I thank him for that. I thank him for that. Oh yeah. Woo. Well, James, the book of James, it teaches us about wisdom. My God. Somebody said one day, if you want an education, go to school. If you want religion, go to church. But if you want wisdom, you got to go to God. Yeah, preacher. Only God. <laughs> can give wisdom. Another writer said one day that great wisdom comes from once have been a great fool. If 
you got your hand burned by that heater, ain't nobody got to tell you about that heater. No more. If you got stung by a bee, nine times out of ten, you ought to know something about the birds and the bees. <laughs> Woo! You ought to know something. Now, in order for your experiences to turn into wisdom, you got to give all of those experiences back to God. Get them out of your hand. All of the failures in your life, all of your mistakes, all of the years when you didn't know no better and you got to give him all of the people that hurt you the most give them to God get them out of your hand hurry up and God will take those experiences and here take those experiences and he'll uh, make them, or rather he, uh, uh, he, he'll make them and turn them, those experiences, into a spiritual fertilizer. And he'll take that spiritual fertilizer and he will stick it under your feet and he'll watch you grow in grace. We're saved by grace through faith. One writer said, that faith is when you got a grip on God. And God's grace is when God got a grip on you. It was God's grace that brought me safe this far. When I look back over my life, all of the tunnels, the hills, the valleys, the heading time, it was nobody but God's grace woke me up this morning. Yeah, yeah. Started me on my way. God's grace. Mount Zion. I want you to know this, that it's God's grace that's holding us. Don't forget it, Mount Zion. My Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> hey, Lord. My, my God. Good word. Thank you. Good one. Well, I want to thank Reverend Johnny. I ain't seen him in months, and I knew there ain't nobody like Reverend Johnny. Nobody. <laughs> uh, Reverend Johnny, you did an awesome job in your own way, and that's what I appreciate uh, when, the, when the teacher takes the assignment. Hey, y'all. Um, when the teacher takes the assignment and completes the assignment, he talked about that tongue, y'all. Yeah. He talked about that tongue, and he made it personal. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thankful to God that he used you today, Brother Johnny. Mm -hmm. I, I got a couple things, and then we're going to do one of my favorite things on Sunday morning. I got a, I got a homework assignment for you. Now, you. You know I like to give homework time. But our homework assignment is, is called "Put Your Faith in Action." You got that up on the on the on the screen, Anthony? Put your faith in action. Put your faith in action. Our life's application is to watch our words. Reverend Johnny talked about that tongue. He talked about how it could be a lying tongue. He talked about how the president could give 
the nation life mm -hmm. instead of death. So we need to put our faith in action this week and going forward. We need to watch our words. It's a new acronym. I'm into acronyms. It's wow. You know, watch your words. Yeah. <laughs> watch our words. And with that in mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna read uh, I'm gonna just read one scripture. Uh, it's James three and one. Reverend Johnny, Reverend Johnny, he got it on got on out of here. But dear brothers and sisters, I liked when he read that. It's not many of you should become teachers in the church. It's an awesome assignment. It's not to be taken lightly. I, I remember or Reverend Johnny mentioned vacation Bible school, Sunday school. Kids remember what we say. They mock us. You know, if you a cusser, you know, hey, you, you probably raising some cussing kids. <laughs> but we need to be teachers in the church. We need to be careful because guess what? Carmen, Brother Willie, Bishop, Anthony, but we who teach will be judged more strictly. I just thought we needed that reminder. And guess what, y'all? Now it is quiz time. It's quiz time, y'all. It's quiz time. I We use quizzes to make sure that we are applied, that we first heard the word. It says, will we hear, not just only hear, but will we do, Brother Willie? Will we hear it and will we do it? Yeah. So quiz time, we're gonna go like this. It's quiz time, y'all, it's quiz time. The first question I'm gonna, I want, I want you to put it in the comments, but I want you to actually think about it a little while. Think about it just a little while and maybe you can answer it last. Um, but this is the first question, talking about biting your tongue or taming the tongue. Reverend Johnny always already told us the scripture said the tongue can no man tame, no man, yeah. but the Holy Ghost. And he told right. the Holy Ghost can help you. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. It says, how can your words be harmful to good relationships? And I want y'all to think about that. Maybe put in the comments a little bit later. But think about that. Remember, you know, some things that you might have let slip out of your mouth. And you know, once they slip out, pull them back in. So remember that and then ask God to repent from that situation. Uh, question number two. Now you can answer this right quick and it's, it's gonna be found in James three and six. But the tongue is like blank that can set someone's life ablaze. The tongue is like blank. Found right there in James three and six. Three and six, it says the tongue is like what, Brother Willie? Fire. The tongue is like fire. Wow, that's scary. The tongue is like fire, right there in James three and six, that can set someone's life ablaze. Question number three, a tongue used to bless God. Now listen, listen. Uh, uh, and I, it comes to mind, Reverend Johnny was talking about that snake tongue, that split tongue. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what's a split tongue? But I, I, I got it now, Carmen. A tongue used to bless God should not also blank the people he made. Mm -hmm. You find that right in James 3, 9, and 10. Mm -hmm. What is it? What is it, Carmen? Curse. Curse. And so, so you mean to tell me that I'm, oh, bless God, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then I'm gonna cuss Carmen out, but not just cuss her out with you know those yeah. words, mm -hmm. but talk about her or say mean things on over her. It, it says it ought not to be, you know, we shouldn't do that. We're gonna bless God and cuss our brothers and sisters. Okay, and we're gonna go back to question number one. I want y'all to think about it. Some of you have put it in the comments, but how can words, glad to see this couple, I hadn't seen you in Sunday school in a while, <laughs> but how can words be harmful to good relationships? Words can be harmful, you know, and some people, you know, 
I got to, I got to, uh, I can't stay mad at people long. And sometimes I get mad about that because I can't stay mad long. Mm -hmm. But when people say mean, hurtful things to you, it hurts you. And you might forgive them. But you be feeling some type of way, you know, after that. So we need to be mindful how we use our words. And we need, and James, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to, get ready to close this out but it says um, sometimes it praises our Lord and Father and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God and so blessing and cursing come pouring out the same mouth surely my brothers and sisters this is not right so we need to be mindful of how we talk to people we need to be mindful of our words. Just don't say it. Bite your tongue. Brother Willie, I'm going to bite my tongue. Tame our tongue. Yeah. And uh, it's a slide, Anthony, if you could put that up there. I don't know if you put it up there or not. But it's a slide. It's kind of humorous. It was a, a slide that says, tame the tongue. It had a man. I, I'm going to be bad. It kind of reminded me of our, our, our resident in the White House. And it says, and then there's another one that's talking about the power of the tongue. And they said, wisdom, a wise person watches his words. You know, so keep that in mind. And we're going to end our Sunday school with, uh, <clears throat> we're going to end our Sunday school with prayer. So if we can have a closing prayer. And then we're going to um, see each other next time. The closing prayer, Lord God, we thank you for blessing us. Lord, even when we don't deserve it, we ask you to help us apply wow, watching our words to our daily lives, Father. Please, we want to reflect your glory. Yes, Father, help us watch our tongue. We ask this prayer. In your darling son Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. amen. Sunday school has been a blast. Until next time, God bless you and keep you is our prayer. Amen.